Hi, I'm Prithyush, a second year PhD student at Johns Hopkins University. And today I'll be presenting our work, India's Aadhaar Biometric ID, Structure Security and Vulnerabilities. Aadhaar is the largest biometric identity system in history. It was designed to help deliver subsidies, benefits, and services to India's 1.4 billion residents. The UIDAI provides a distinct 12-digit Aadhaar number using biometrics and demographic info to each resident of India. As of now, there exists no single document which provides a comprehensive description of the Aadhaar infrastructure. Currently, Aadhaar documentation is a changing landscape. New fixes, new features, and new documentation is released every year. We read hundreds of pages of documentation to come up with a single most comprehensive description of Aadhaar's infrastructure. All of the documents that were used to write this paper are available in the repository, which is linked with this presentation. We also interviewed Aadhaar personnel, filed for information which was not available publicly. And as a result, we discussed many of Aadhaar's challenges and possible vulnerabilities in the infrastructure which have not been discussed previously. Let's look at the journey of a single individual's information throughout the Aadhaar ecosystem. The first step is enrollment. Let's say a resident of India, Anita, approaches an enrollment center to get registered into the Aadhaar system. Anita fills her personal details in the enrollment form and submits it to an enrollment officer. The enrollment officer then uses the enrollment client software to record her biometrics, which is a picture of her face, iris scan, and fingerprints. These, along with the demographic details, are entered into the system. Anita also has to carry her original documents, such as proof of identity and address, which will be scanned and then returned to her by the enrollment officer. The personal information is then encrypted and uploaded to a centralized database for deduplication to ensure that no individual is enrolled twice. Once this process is complete, Anita will receive a letter containing a randomly generated Aadhaar number against which her information could be authenticated throughout her life. Let's look at what happens behind the scenes here. There is a cross-validation process where the enrollment client sends Anita's data to the central identities data repository. CIDR is a centralized database for all Aadhaar numbers corresponding demographics and biometric data. The connection between the CIDR and the enrollment client is protected using SSL. Each connection is also logged. The provided information is verified and matched against existing enrollments. This is called the duplication. We'll look at this in more detail at a later stage. Now that this Aadhaar number is available, let's look at how this helps for authentication. The authentication or know your customer process can be utilized by a bank, a pension office, or any such institution. Suppose the pension office asks Anita for her Aadhaar number and fingerprints and sends an authentication request to the CIDR. This returns a yes slash no response, basically saying that, yes, this is Anita, or it may similarly just verify Anita's age. For this purpose, usually fingerprint biometrics are utilized. Before looking at the security and privacy of Aadhaar, let's look at possible threat actors. We classify threat actors based on their capability, motivation, and possible damage cost. A rogue enrollment operator is the first barrier of entry to an individual's information to the central repository. They have the responsibility of asking the individual their information and verifying this information's authenticity. A rogue agent can possibly enroll the individual with faulty data, or worse, make a copy of their data and enroll a fake resident instead. Next is a rogue agency seeking to become an authentication service provider. Such an agency may provide authentication based on identity forgery. For example, an operator at a cellular agency could authenticate twice by using Anita's Aadhaar details while she's applying for a new SIM card and then keep one connection for themselves or sell it for nefarious purposes. Next is the rogue enrollment agent. 
A rogue enrollment agent can help generate fake Aadhaar cards. In practice, there is little oversight in place, and there are examples in the media where fake Aadhaar cards for humans or worse, even pets have been generated. Rogue UIDI officials have access privileges which if misused can result in identity theft, fake voter IDs and more. And last but not the least are the external parties like governments, uh, IT companies and curious residents who could try to access confidential other information for varying motives. Depending on the resources possessed by these external parties, the damage caused can vary quite a bit. Let's dive deeper into the security landscape, starting with hardware, because many biometric devices are at each endpoint where Aadhaar is utilized. All devices have different compliance levels, but each registered device has a unique device identifier. Biometric data recorded on this device is then signed with the device key to ensure liveness and encrypted on device as well. There are two levels of compliance. Level zero compliance ensures that the implementation of signing and encryption of biometrics happens within the software zone at the host operation system level. This includes ensuring that the associated private keys are not compromised through access via any external applications within the operating system and the biometric data cannot be injected maliciously in any case. Level one compliance enhances the security by ensuring that the signing and encryption take place within a trusted execution environment. The private keys and the biometrics are then stored in and accessed via this trusted execution environment. Any provider of an L1 compliant device needs to supply pre-certified hardware and accompanying software. Uh, these this hardware and software should protect against attacks like hardware cloning, hardware tampering, using physical attacks, voltage-based attacks, temperature-based attacks, uh, differential power analysis, probing, or memory segregation of cryptographic operations, and ensure that the trusted execution environment also executes pr properly. The certification process for these devices is quite exhaustive and combines testing over multiple widely regarded industry and government standards like NIST's FIPS for the security of cryptographic modules, PCI, PTS, uh, and various different certifications. However, we found that a small part of hardware and system software is vendor certified. It is unclear how a vendor can verifiably self-certify a lack of backdoors. We leave this as an open problem. Now let's look at key management. Each device provider must, re must register and obtain a device provider ID via UIDAI. UIDAI then finds a public key certificate procured by the device provider from a certificate authority. L1 compliant devices store their signing and encryption keys in pre-certified hardware. Furthermore, the UIDAI policy specifies time periods after which device keys have to be rotated. There exists a hardware key store in L1 compliant devices. However, L0 compliant devices have a software-based key store provided by the operating system. Common software security practices are specified and required for this key store. All access to this key store is locked. Now let's look at the biometric deduplication process. The goal is to ensure that each set of biometrics corresponds to a unique individual. The algorithm used to ensure this, the way it works is that for each new user that has to be added to the system, the algorithm checks that this user does not already exist in the database. Deduplication at the billion scale has never been previously attempted. With 10 fingerprints and a facial image, a 95% deduplication rate could be achieved over a population of 50 million people. To increase the deduplication rate to 99%, usage of uh, iris biometrics was proposed. 
Aadhaar combines face, fingerprint, and iris biometrics for this. However, there is no documentation about the matching algorithms. But from our interviews of Aadhaar personnel, this problem is viewed and solved as a multi-class classification problem where there are as many classes as there are individuals in the Aadhaar database. If candidate duplicates are discovered, uh, they are tagged using some more features along with a combination of manual assistance. We received some general references for the biometric algorithms used, but no further information. There are some privacy issues which are caused by Aadhaar's policy for logging requests and responses. These logs are rich spatiotemporal data on almost everyone in India. What this creates is the possibility of the privacy of registered individuals to be heavily compromised in the event of a breach and the possibility of surveillance. To avoid this, Aadhaar holders can self-generate virtual IDs for privacy. Virtual IDs are temporary, revocable, 16-digit random numbers that are one-way mapped from the Aadhaar numbers and can be used for anonymization. However, even anonymized spatiotemporal data can be used to uniquely identify a very large fraction of the individuals. Existing documentation is ambiguous as to whether virtual IDs are used by default for authentication requests as well. Hence, Non-KYC operations, such as uh, verification of age, should not reveal anything beyond verification. For example, a query of the form, is said individual of age 25 should only return a yes or no response. We also identify a cryptographic challenge or issue with Aadhaar. This possible cryptographic attack was reported to UIDAI. They validated the existence of this issue, correctness of our attack, and ensured that it has been mitigated. Note that carrying out such an attack would be illegal, as Aadhaar is classified as a protected system under the Indian Information Security Act. This attack concerns authentication requests. These requests are sent after package biometrics are communicated post-encryption using AES-GCM. Forbidden attack is a popular attack on AES-GCM. If an adversary sees two different messages encrypted with the same initialization vector, it can inject malicious content into the communication channel. This is possible because the IV used for this purpose in Aadhaar is the last 12 bytes of the timestamp you see on screen. What this means is trivially, the IV is reused if multiple messages are sent within the same second, or if messages are buffered or bashed. At the end of the day, this only utilizes uh, the time and day of the month and no other information. Why was such IV chosen? Uh, this is because maintaining a counter across 30 million devices has very high communication complexity. So the Aadhaar team decided to use timestamps as IVs due to the availability of this information across all devices. And to mitigate this attack, all AES ECM communications now occur over secure channels with unique session keys. This prevents the attack from being exploitable. Furthermore, UIDAI policy is to use RSA with uh, 2048 bit keys for public key and AES with 256 bit keys for symmetric key encryption. However, the bottom line is still this. That is, if a targeted attack occurs on one communication channel such that it allows eavesdropping, then the attack surface is actually huge. Authentication requests can be altered over the channel due to IV reuse post such a targeted attack. And as a consequence, a malicious party can open a bank account, fly domestically, get a SIM card, a phone connection, all of the above in someone else's name. 
We also look at the allegations by the media on our heart. We create a database of media allegations consisting of 36 reports from various news outlets in India. We filter breaches that are legitimate based on our knowledge of Aadhaar's infrastructure and our definitions of security and privacy. What we found is there were 17 legitimate security breaches and 10 privacy breaches. We analyzed them under the CIA triad, which is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. According to our analysis, the prevalence breach is of confidentiality and integrity. This usually entails a subset of Aadhaar data being made public, usually due to human errors. Breaches of availability are rare and occur only in cases of insider attacks. The CIDR repository is itself reasonably secure and removing or editing information is quite hard to do. In conclusion, the framework does not have any glaring security flaws of the kind suggested by sensationalist media reports. Almost all the issues we found were due to a set of challenges unique to a system at Aadhaar scale. We recommend that the architects of Aadhaar make the system design more transparent and open source to identify any potential attacks. Thanks for watching.